Well, we count on our knees for everything, so when there's a problem, it can really slow you down. Well, our next guest says he is here to help. Dr. Philip Bell is the orthopedic surgeon over at the Jacksonville Orthopedic Institute. Uh, good to see you. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having Appreciate me. Appreciate this. This is something that we were talking about, you know, the commercial break. You don't really realize how much you rely on your knees until you're starting to have a problem, and then everything just gets exponentially harder to do. You're absolutely right. So before we get into what you can do to help relieve people's knee pains, let's talk about you. Welcome to Jacksonville by the sure. way. Been here just a couple of months. Yeah, a couple of months. Came here from Tampa. I spent a year in Tampa doing an additional year of training specializing in hip and knee replacement. Uh, my family, three kids, my wife Tia, we're all very happy to be in Jacksonville. And I know you've done schooling all over you. Colorado, Tennessee, road. and then now to Jacksonville. Long road. We're happy to settle down. Yes, I, I bet, and I bet your wife is too. She I is. bet she's saying hallelujah. And right. you couldn't pick a better place because Jacksonville is a great place to live. So let's talk about uh, what people can do. Um, first talking about who would be an ideal candidate for this, not necessarily just someone who has pain, right? I mean, there has sure. to be more to it than that. Sure. So there are two reasons people generally decide they need to see a doctor for knee pain, and that is, one, they're losing sleep at night. So they can't sleep because their knees are just aching. And number two, people into their 50s, 60s, 70s, even 80s are leading much more active lifestyles than they once did. And so their activities, walking, hiking, running, cycling that people want to keep as a part of their lives and occasionally their knees prevent them from doing that. When should someone consider seeing someone such as yourself and when would you think that a knee replacement or a partial replacement that you brought these examples here would sure. be necessary? So it's a step-by-step -step process so the decision to go see a doctor is like I said so if pain or loss of function is preventing you from leading the life you want to live then go see your doctor. Once you go see the doctor generally get an x-ray of your knee, see what's going on inside the knee. And if it's arthritis or degenerative condition, we can try things like medications, over-the-counter Aleve, ibuprofen, those kinds of things, injections in the knees, therapy. And if those things fail to meet the patient's needs, then we talk about knee replacement Right, surgery. try everything first, do the right. conservative approach, exactly and then right. I'm sure technology has just evolved so much over the years that um, the replacements, let's first talk about the partial knee right. replacement and what you guys would do for that. Yeah, so there are generally two types of knee replacements, partial knee replacements and full knee replacements. Mm -hmm. And when we talk about partial knee replacements, there are three areas of the knee that can be replaced. Medial, meaning the inside part of the knee, lateral, or patellofemoral, okay? When we do these, the advantage is we keep the ligaments inside of the knee intact, whereas whenever we do a full knee replacement, those have to be removed in order to do the surgery. So an advantage of doing a partial knee replacement is that it's a generally a slightly quicker recovery and it's a more normal feeling knee because you still have those ligaments intact. Is this a relatively new technology because was it before you just went to the full knee replacement and that was the only option that was on the table? Literally? Sure, so it hasn't been around as long as a full knee replacement but it's been around for a couple of decades. Okay. Uh, technology has advanced so that at one point, these were not quite as recommended because they didn't last as long, but things are getting better and better, and we're finding that they last nearly as long as full knee replacements. What about recovery from someone who might be holding off getting this procedure done because they're thinking, I sure. don't want to be sitting for four months, you know, with my leg propped up in the air? Right. I think that's probably one of our greatest advancements in the last 10 to 15 years is the multimodal pain managements we use perioperatively. And what that means is immediately before surgery, during surgery, and after to give patients a quick recovery. Whereas we used to see patients stay in the hospital for four or five days after a knee replacement. Now, one or two nights in the hospital, some places are doing them outpatient, so same day surgery. And what is the function of the knee? I know it's case by case basis, but sure. when someone gets this procedure done, can they go back to doing things that they love, they like can. playing golf? They can, golf, absolutely, doubles tennis, hiking, we don't recommend going back to running, but some folks do, and we don't have any great evidence that says that they can't do that. Yeah, I guess it's as far as you want to go. So bottom line is if you're having pain and you've been doing some, you know, um, Tylenol, acetaminophen, what have you, it hasn't sure. been working, come see someone. Let somebody check it out. Good deal. Thanks for being here. Welcome to Jacksonville. Thank you, Casey. Appreciate your time. Uh, and if we'd like to thank, of course, the Jacksonville Orthopedic Institute for coming on and making this segment possible. And you can get more information on them by going to their website, which is joi.net. And the number is also on your screen, 904-JOI-2000.